Hello, I'm Aksuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's pray. Father, we just love you today. And we lift up our voice in praise to your name. I pray right now, everyone listening to me right now, burdens are being lifted from their lives. Yokes are being destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the activities of angels all around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, we are still talking on angelic assistance. And I told you, we, we, I'm sharing something very, very vital to you this week. Jesus, two scriptures that are anchor scriptures this week is Mark chapter 13 and verse 27, where Jesus said, and then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of the heaven. Jesus is sending his angels and the job of these angels is to gather his elect there is a gathering that you will soon see begin to take place it has already started but you see the more we get closer the more it it it, it becomes evident now, even while this gathering is taking place, guess what? There are people who are going to be looking at and say, what's going on? What's, what is all this one? What is all this nonsense? What is all this rubbish? Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? Now, on the one hand, the angels are going to gather all the elects together. On the other hand, which we read in Matthew chapter 13, verse 41, the Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. Let me read. And those who practice lawlessness. It says, and we cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has an ear, he who has ears, let him hear. Praise God. So, two things angels are going to be doing as regards the end time. They are gathering, they are going to gather God's elect together. And then also they are going to gather out of the kingdom everything that causes offense. You know, sometimes you look around and you see a lot of wrong things going on. Now, things you know they are wrong even among what we call the church. You hear, you, you see people, you, you hear things, and you just know that this is not the work of the Holy Spirit. This is fake. This is wrong. I was one, one time worried about those things, you know, and then I, I began to pray about it. I said, Lord, you've got to stop this. I mean, these people are spoiling the work. And then the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, Son, I'll tell you something. I'm not bothered about what people do in this regard. I said, Lord, Lord, are you not concerned about the people that will be misled? And then the Lord said to me, my sheep hear my voice. A stranger's voice, they will not follow. I said, oh, oh. Oh, I get it now. I get it now. So it's not a problem, <laughs> oh God. You know, sometimes we get carried away, and, and that's 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 the the that, that's what Satan is up to. He does all these things to get you distracted, and you don't focus. Listen, no matter what is going on around you. Keep your focus. So you see all these things taking place. Oh, what, what, what? And then you see, see some, some of God's children who are called into ministry, 
because they, they don't see the kind of result others are seeing, you know, in quotes. And then they begin to go ask questions. Come, what, 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 what? And they say, oh, we'll take you somewhere. We'll take you somewhere. And then you follow them and say, ah, I, I know this guy and I respect him. So is this what it is? And then some of them even go as far as joining them. Joining them to do what is wrong. Listen, brothers and sisters. The Bible says, let him that is righteous be righteous still. If you have seen the way of righteousness, walk in it. Allow those who have not seen or who have deviated from the way of righteousness. They are not your problem. They have never been your problem. Some even deceive themselves and say, I will just enter. When I gain fame, I will come out of it. You are deceiving yourself. I will tell you this for free. Any fame that the Lord has not given you, the day you decide to repent, you will drop that fame and start forgiving from where you stopped. Yeah, because don't ever think God is going to bless what he has not given to you. He is not in a hurry to see successful people. He makes successful people. Praise God. So, so don't, don't, think, don't think you can just come to God as you are. Ah, God, now I'm rich. Wow, oh yeah. Let's do the work. Let's start walking. <laughs> He says, son of man, are you back home? Say, yes, I'm back home. Okay, go and throw away all those things. And let's continue where we stopped. Eh? Ah, no. Now you begin to look at those stupid sacrifices you have made. Well, I call them stupid because God did not instruct you to do them. And then you tell yourself, where will I start from? How will I start? And then it becomes a challenge to you. You are stuck. Why didn't you stay with the Lord and be patient? Let me tell you this. Everyone has his place in the kingdom. Everyone has. You make sure you are following the leading of the Spirit of God for your life. And he is building you up. Because the day you come, see all these things that are offensive. He, angels will pluck them out. You see, and secondly, God has not sent anybody with a ministry to go and expose false prophets. There is no such ministry. So when somebody comes and says, my ministry is to expose false teachings and false prophets, there is no such ministry, brothers and sisters. No such ministry. There is no one God have called to do that kind of thing. Just like someone say, my ministry is to chase dev demons. There is no such ministry as chasing demons ministry. There is no such ministry. How can God set up a ministry and his focus, focus is on demons? Think about it. How can God set up a ministry and his focus is on false prophets? Come on now. <laughs> See, when you speak the truth, the children of God will hear the truth and they will fall in line. You don't have to say this person is false. That message is false. No, just speak the truth. It doesn't matter how many lies are being told. The truth is the truth. When you stand to speak the truth, the children of God will hear. Now, if the children, if if if, if angels are going to gather the elect, guess what? It also means when you are speaking the truth, angels are going to gather God's children to come and hear you. And they will hear you, they'll be built up, they'll be converted, and then they walk in the light of the kingdom. So don't worry yourself about those who are doing the wrong things. Never, never worry yourself about them. Don't be bored. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I, you know I, I, as a pastor, as a preacher, you meet people every time. So you meet people who are, for example, in our country, you meet people who are like, hi, man, I'm tired of this country. I'm tired. How, how long will this thing come? How long? Some people say, how long will God keep quiet? <laughs> oh, Brede Sagiyaka. He will keep quiet until the right time. <laughs> now, not because he's quiet. He is doing a work that you don't even know about. Praise God. Yeah. No, sometimes people think God's just quiet. I wish God would just act. Who told you he's not acting? The fact that he's not acting the way you will see doesn't mean he's not acting. I'll give you an example. God made Saul. To be king, right? When the people demanded a king, God chose Saul by himself. He said, This guy is the one that I've chosen. He will be your king. He had this great plan for Saul. But guess what? Three years, I want you to follow this. Three years into Saul's kingship, God confessed that he regrets making Saul king. God said that. He said it to Samuel. 
Now, what happened after that regret? God actually told Samuel that this guy can't keep my word. This guy can't be the king that I desire. So you know what? I'm taking... Now, now for example, Samuel told him, say, hey, if you had done this right, God would have preserved your lineage for kingship. But now you know what? He's done. He's looking for... He's gone to another family. Now, when God left Saul, because he was disappointed in him, he didn't just go to the next family to look for someone. Guess what God did? He went to the womb and formed David. Are you following? Now, you know, simple study. You find out that David was born 10 years after Saul has been king. Because Saul ruled for 40 years as king. And then he died. And when he died, David was made king. And David was 30 years old when he was made king. So if you are 30 years old and you're taking over from a man who ruled for 40 years, it simply means you were born 10 years after that man has been ruling. <laughs> Do you understand? So, so God went to the womb from the king. Now think about those years, those, let's say, seven years after Saul became king, that God started searching for a new king. Everything looked quiet. Saul was just allowed to do what he likes. Saul was ruling any way he wanted to rule. But hey, guess what? God was behind the scene. He was walking. I can just imagine God looking through the whole land and he not finding any seed. Not finding anyone, I mean, I mean, that is fit to rule. That, I mean, he tested everybody's hearts. He was testing hearts. And like, nah, it's all, no, you can't. Test, no, it's no, no, no. He said, how do I know that? Even in the house of Jesse, God visited son by son. So when Samuel got to the house of Jesse, he saw the first son. And that one came and said, behold, the Lord's anointed is before him. God said, hey, I have rejected him. When did God reject him? That's the day that God had gone round. <laughs> and he couldn't find anyone that would fit. Now what am I saying? All those years, it looked like God was quiet. Nothing was happening. People would have said, can you imagine this soul? How can, how can he make this kind of decision? Oh God. And God looked, looked quiet. But he wasn't quiet. He was walking. That's the same thing with your nation. God is not quiet. He is walking. He is preparing the one that he is going to use. Praise God. Yeah, he is preparing. Because, you see, when, when God steps, you know, sometimes we pray, Oh, God, visit us. Oh, God, step in. in. And sometimes God will have to prepare. And that's what he is doing with our nation. At the end of the day, which is soon, I'm telling you the truth. This is very soon. <laughs> when... When, when he does that change, then you will know what it is to wait for the Lord. I'm telling you the truth. Don't think God is silent. <laughs> if you listen to God, you will know he's not silent. And so when you see all this evil going on in the church, when you see all this evil going on in the nation, God is working out something. And a day is going to come that he's going to separate the wheat from the shaft. He's going to take out everything that offends. He will take them out. Not you. He's not sending any man to take them out. These are the complete work of angels. That's, that's why I'm sharing these things with you. Because we're talking about angelic assistance. He is taking out these things by the angels. They will take them out completely. And then, it's now the season for the righteous to shine. Just like in our nation, there are many names you hear today, very soon, though, it's so obsolete that you will not know that these men were alive or these men were, were calling the shots just two years or three years ago. They will be put away. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I, I pray, Lord, indeed, visit our nation. We receive your visitation, Lord to do a clean walk that your children will be glad in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.
Bye-bye.